Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice, where we take up MCQ based on articles appearing in the Hindu and the Indian Express. These are the list of the news on which we will be taking up today's MCQ session. So on this note, let's start our today's discussion. Now our first MCQ is based on this news appearing on page number 8 and it says that army may build Bailey bridges in Kaziranga to protect rhino's domain. With reference to the greater one-horned rhinoceros, consider the following statements. So here you need to know about rhinoceros. First, it is the largest of the rhino species identified by a single white horn and black hide with skin folds. Second, approximately 75% of the entire population of greater one-horned rhinoceros can be found in Kaziranga National Park in Assam. And third, it is listed as critically endangered in the IUCN list of threatened species. And a statement based questions on one horned rhinoceros was also asked in the prelims of 2019. So we need to know about greater one horned rhinoceros. So based on this question, it says that it is the largest of the rhino species and is identified by a single black horn and not a white horn and a grey brown hide with skin folds. So based on this, the first statement becomes incorrect. Now regarding its presence, it says that approximately 75% of the entire population of greater one horned rhinoceros now occurs in India in three states, namely Assam, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal. So based on this, the second statement also becomes incorrect. And its IUCN status is vulnerable. So here the third statement also becomes incorrect. So here the question was which of the statements given above is are correct. Hence the correct answer here becomes D that is none of the above. And based on this question, you need to know about greater one horned rhinoceros and also certain aspects with respect to Kaziranga National Park, such as it is a national park located in Assam. It hosts two thirds of the world's Indian rhinoceros and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was declared a tiger reserve in 2006 and it is also recognized as an important bird area by BirdLife International. Now, another important aspect regarding greater one horned rhinoceros is that the census of rhinoceros is undertaken at the state level by respective state governments periodically. So these are some of the important aspects with respect to Greater One Horn Rhinoceros and also Kaziranga National Park. And coming to the answer of UPSC question asked in 2019, the correct answer is A, that is one only, as these two statements are incorrect and One Horn Rhinoceros is also found in countries other than India such as Nepal and also Bangladesh. Now our next MCQ is based on this news appearing on page number 12. It says, G7 ministers commit to work for carbon-free electricity by 2035. And based on this, the question says, consider the following statements. First, electricity produced through nuclear energy is an example of carbon-free electricity production. And second, while all renewable energy is carbon-free, but all carbon-free energy is not renewable. So here you need to distinguish between carbon-free energy and also renewable energy. Now examples of carbon-free electricity can be nuclear energy, that is electricity produced through nuclear energy. So all carbon-free electricity is not renewable energy, but all renewable energy can be said to be carbon-free. So this is the basic distinction here. So some of the renewable energy include solar energy, wind energy, hydroelectric energy, so these renewable energy are carbon free, but all carbon free energy such as electricity produced through nuclear power plants cannot be said to be renewable energy. And this is the distinction between carbon free energy and also renewable energy. So in this coming to the first statement, it says that electricity produced through nuclear energy is an example of carbon free electricity production. This is correct. And second, while all renewable energy is carbon free, but all carbon free energy is not renewable. So this statement is also correct. So here the question was, which of the statements given above is are correct. So here the correct answer becomes C, that is both 1 and 2. So here you must understand that the terms carbon free and renewable energy are often used in similar context, but these two resources create different environmental and economic impacts also. So there is a difference between carbon free energy and energy produced through renewable energy. So its examples include nuclear energy or large hydroelectric powers. Whereas renewable energy is classified as naturally replenishing resource that produces zero emissions. And it also includes solar energy, wind energy, geothermal energy, biomass and bio waste. 
and also eligible hydroelectric energy. So it highlights overall that while all renewable energy is carbon free, but not all carbon free energy is renewable and only naturally replenishing sources are renewable. Now different modes of energy production has been asked by UPSC in the past and this question based on algae based biofuels was asked in 2017. The question was it is possible to produce algae based biofuels but what is or are the likely limitations of developing countries in promoting this industry. So here the correct answer is 2 and 3 that is the first statement is incorrect which says that production of algae based biofuels is possible in seas only and not on continents. So this statement is incorrect whereas the second and third statements are correct. So in this particular question please ensure the difference between renewable energy and carbon free energy. Now let's take up the third question based on this news appearing on page number 15 and this news is with respect to the area of Sudan. So it says 61 dead after clashes between Sudan army and rivals enter second day. So through this news what you need to know is the location based questions and as you can see location based questions have been asked regularly and this one was asked in 2022 that is last year. So based on this the practice question is consider the following pairs country an important reason for being in news recently. Options are Sudan, reason in news because civil war has erupted again. Second, Tunisia because political protest against president. Third, Democratic Republic of Congo because it faced jihadist insurgency and Burkina Faso which is rebellion by M23 group. Now if you have gone through the news recently then you must know that these two options have been interchanged. Now Sudan is in news because obviously civil war has erupted again in its capital of Khartoum and these clashes are part of power struggle between General Abdul Fattah Burhan who is the commander of armed forces and General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo who is the head of rapid support forces group. Now coming to Tunisia there have been political protest which was erupted against their president. In Democratic Republic of Congo there is a rebellion by M23 group which occurred between the March 23 movement and the government forces. And this clash is further raising concerns about ethnic violence in Eastern Congo. And with respect to Burkina Faso, it is facing jihadist insurgency. So the question was how many pairs given above are correctly matched. So only two pairs here are correctly matched. So here the correct answer becomes only two pairs that is B becomes the correct answer. Now on similar pattern, a question was asked by UPSC in 2022 based on matching of pairs with respect to country and important reason for being in news recently and in this only three pairs are correctly matched that is the first pair is incorrectly matched whereas the second, third and fourth is correctly matched. So here you also see Tunisia suspension of parliament by its president. So these important locations which often appears in news also becomes critical with respect to these type of question asked by UPSC in the prelims examination. Now the next MCQ is based on the news appearing in Indian Express on page number 8 and it, this news says the El Nino shadow. A clearer picture will emerge by May end but government could prepare for a possible subnormal monsoon. So here the question is consider the following statements. First. During El Nino event, strong winds along the equator push the warm surface water westwards towards Indonesia. And second, a negative Indian Ocean dipole results in more rainfall in India and Eastern Africa. So here you need to know the basics that is the concepts with respect to El Nino events and how it impacts rainfall in India and also in other regions of the world and also the impact of Indian Ocean dipole. So it highlights that normally that is in normal situation strong winds along the equator push warm surface water near South America westward that is from South America towards this region towards Indonesia and when this happens the cooler water underneath rises up towards the surface of the ocean near South America. But the reverse happens in El Nino years so it says that however in El Nino years these winds are much weaker than usual. So in normal times these are the area in which rainfall happens but in El Nino conditions much of the rainfall takes place around this area. So based on this the first statement here becomes incorrect because this phenomena does not happen during El Nino event but during normal event. Now coming to Indian Ocean Dipole. 
So Indian Ocean Dipole is defined by the difference in sea surface temperature between two areas or two pores, hence called a dipole. And this area is the western pole in Arabian Sea, that is this part, and an eastern pole in the eastern Indian Ocean south of Indonesia, that is these areas. So this difference in sea surface temperature also impacts rainfall. So when we talk about positive IOD, there is a warmer Arabian Sea and the eastern part brings more rainfall in India, that is this situation. So there is more rainfall in India when there is a positive phase of Indian Ocean Dipole. But in a negative IOD, it causes drought-like situation in India because, because then the heavy rainfall occurs into these areas and not in India. So in a positive IOD, there is a much warmer Arabian Sea and because of this, greater rainfall occurs in India. So the second statement says a negative Indian Ocean Dipole results in more rainfall in India and Eastern Africa. No, this is incorrect as such a situation brings drought in the country. So coming to the question, it says which of the statements given above is are correct. Here the correct answer is D, which is neither one nor two. Now based on these understanding of El Nino events, Indian Ocean Dipole and also formation of cyclone, a question was asked by UPC in 2020. Now here you should know that in an eye of a cyclone, the pressure is extremely less and temperature is high. So here the third statement that is the temperature inside the eye of a cyclone is nearly 10 degrees Celsius lesser than that of the surrounding is incorrect. Rather it is 10 degrees Celsius warmer. So here the correct answer was C that is 2 only. Now let's take up the next MCQ from page number 13 with respect to India EU FTA that is free trade agreement. Here the question is, with reference to the free trade agreement, consider the following statements. First, in FTAs, partner countries maintain individual tariff structures for non-members. This statement is correct. Second, in FTA, there is a positive list of products on which duty is to be reduced. No, this is incorrect as in free trade agreement, there is a negative list. And in these negative list, whatever items are placed on these, the customs duty is not reduced. In other words, the terms of FTA does not apply to those items which has been placed under the negative list. So here the question is which of the statements given above is are correct. Hence the correct answer here becomes A that is one only. Now talking about positive list, it is there in preferential trade agreement or PTA. So it says that in PTA there is a positive list of products on which duty is to be reduced. Whereas in FTA, there is a negative list on which terms of FTA does not apply or customs duty is not reduced. So please remember with respect to preferential trade agreement, there is a positive list and with reference to free trade agreement, there is a negative list. Now on similar lines, question was asked by UPAC in 2018 regarding free trade partners and the correct answer here is C that is 1, 3, 4 and 5. Now moving to our last MCQ which is based on this particular article appearing on page number 8 in the Indian Express and this news is regarding recognition of political parties. So here the question is consider the following statements with respect to political parties in India. First, as of now there are 6 recognized national political parties according to the election commission. So this statement is true as recently election commission of India has withdrew recognition of certain national political parties and granted the status of national party or recognized Aam Admi party as a national party. So there are certain conditions based on which political parties are recognized as state party or national party. And these conditions have been provided under the election symbols order. So the second statement says, after recognition of political parties as national or state parties, such recognition cannot be revoked by election commission. No, this statement is incorrect as recently election commission has withdrew the national status of certain political parties such as NCP and also All India Trinamool Congress. Third, the criteria for any political party to be recognized as national or state party have been provided under the Representation of People Act 1950. No, this statement is again incorrect as I have stated that it has been provided under the Election Symbols Order of 1968. So here the question is which of the statements given above is are correct. Here the correct answer becomes D that is one only. An answer to this particular question asked by UPAC in 2017 with respect to election commission. The correct answer here is D that is three only as the first and the second statement are incorrect.
So with this, we come to an end to today's discussion. Thank you for watching Daily Prelims Practice.